Shalom, I'm Rabbi Jonathan Ginsburg. I know that for a stranger coming into a synagogue, seeing the body movements of people can be kind of confusing, so I want to explain a few of them. First of all, there's a, a point in the service in the Amida called the Kedusha, where we kind of imitate the angels sanctifying God. And one of the movements, when you, you do it standing with your heels together, you don't move that way. Um, one of the things you do when you're saying that, you say the angels... Karim Zeh El Zeh, you'll see people go Zeh to this side and Zeh to this side. In addition, when they say Kadosh, 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 Holy, 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 you'll see them on their heels push up on the soles of their feet and move their heels up, and then they'll go up a little bit higher on the second Kadosh and a little bit higher on the third Kadosh. Holy, Holier, Holiest. In addition, when they, the first two blessings of the Amida, when they bow, they will say, Baruch, they'll bow, Baruch, Ata, Adonai, and stand up straight. You'll see that a couple times. Another thing they do, before they even start, is they'll walk up two and a half feet, and then they'll walk back two and a half feet. Well, why do they do that? We believe it's because in ancient times when you address the king, you moved up, uh, you, you, um, you had to move back, but you can't move back in your pew unless you move up first. So you move up two and a half feet, and then you move back two and a half feet. Also, at the very end of every service we have, we have a prayer called the Elenu, and there's a verse that says, V'anachnu korim u'mishtachavim u'modim. That is, we bend the knee and we bow. So when you say, V'anachnu korim, you kind of bend the knee, and u'mishtachavim, you go, you bow your head forward like this, when you're standing up, and then umodim, you stand up straight. Also, when we have the prayer, the Kaddish, and you get to the last line, Oseh Shalom Bim Romav, Hu Yaseh Shalom, you'll see people, again, take a few steps back, and then turn to one side, and turn the other side. Oseh Shalom back a little bit, Oseh Shalom Bim Romav, Hu Yaseh Shalom, Aleinu, to one side, Ve'al Kol Yisrael, the other side, Imru Amen. So those are some of the uh, motions. Also, uh, you'll see people take little strings, which are part of the talit, and when they say the last paragraph of the Shema, and I've talked about this in other videos about the talit and the Shema, every time they say fringes, seat, seat, in that last paragraph of the Shema, they will take the fringes wrapped around a finger and kiss it. Seat, 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 seat. Now another movement is when the Torah is on parade during the Torah service on Monday, Thursday morning, Saturday morning, or Saturday afternoon, when it walks by, people will take their talus if they're having it with the tzitzit and touch the Torah as it goes by and kiss it. This is not idolatry to the Torah, simply venerating the Torah. And if they're not wearing a talit, they'll take the siddur and touch the talit, uh, the Torah I mean, and kiss it like that. Another Jewish move is when you're going into a room which has a mezuzah, you touch the mezuzah, Kiss your finger like that, just to show that you're aware the mezuzah is there and to try to bring the holiness of that. Now sometimes you'll see, if you go especially to an ultra-Orthodox ultra synagogue, people in fervent prayer, they'll be shuck, they call it shuckling, like moving back and forth. It's actually a meditative trance. People who've done it actually increase their spiritual intentionality, their kavanah, and their prayer. Also, in certain Orthodox synagogues, you'll see during certain prayers where people will take the prayer shawl and wrap it all around their head. It's almost like completely covered by it. The prayer for Talit is lehitatef batzitzit, to be wrapped. And they want to increase their spiritual intentionality. I mentioned on my tape about the Shema that when people are saying Shema Yisrael, I don't know, I don't they'll often cover their eyes like this, again, to increase their spiritual intentionality, their kavanah, so that they're only thinking about God being one when they do that prayer. Uh, on the only time you'll see Jews ever completely down on the ground are the high holidays when the cantor and the rabbi will lie down flat in the ark or halfway in the ark and that is simply a role playing uh, reminding us of the time when the high priest would enter the Holy of Holies only at that moment in Yom Kippur. Those are some of the basic movements that you'll see. Best thing is to kind of watch what people do and uh, copy and you'll get a hang of it also, uh, as I explained on my tape about uh, the talus, when people are putting the talit on, uh, first thing, they will grab hold of it, both edges, with the, uh, the atara, the thing on the top facing them, and when they say the bracha, they'll often bring both sides 
and kiss it and then put it on like that. Those are a lot of the motions of um, Jewish prayer. There's actually Jewish calisthenics between uh, you get a little exercise, all the sitting and standing in Jewish prayer, the person who has to lift the heavy Torah up uh, and turn it around, that takes some strength, um, all the uh, bending and stuff. But in any case, those are some of the movements of Jewish prayer worship, and you'll just see it and get familiar with it if you're not now.